Hi, everyone. Lovely to have you here. So today I'm going to be introducing you to Ayurveda. Now, maybe you know a bit about Ayurveda already and you just want to understand it in a bit more depth, or it could be this is totally new to you. You don't really know much about Ayurveda at all, and that's absolutely fine because we're going to really go back to basics. So let me share my slides and then we will get straight into it. So hopefully you can all see this now. So I'm going to be introducing you to Ayurveda. My slides go through. Okay, so we're going to really be talking today about what Ayurveda is. I'm going to introduce some of the key Ayurvedic concepts, but really so we can start to come on to that third point about understanding what it means by our individual constitutions. And we're going to touch on um, the seasons and our circadian rhythms and how that can really affect our well-being and also the different life stages as well. Okay, so let's get straight into it. So these first few slides, I'm going to be introducing you to some concepts it might feel a bit heavy, please bear with me because by the third or fourth slide, it's really going to start to make sense. Okay, so just so we understand what Ayurveda is. Ayurveda is a spiritual science, so it dates back 5,000 years, and it's actually the sister science to yoga. So when we think about these two sciences, we've got the science of self-healing, which is Ayurveda, and then self-realization, which is yoga. So they come together really nicely. Ayurveda is a Sanskrit term. So Aya means life and Veda means wisdom. So with, it's actually translated as the wisdom of life. And it's a traditional healing system that comes from India. And Ayurveda, what it actually does, it really helps us to understand our own unique physical and mental constitution. And it's a very holistic approach to healing. Okay, it's all about achieving balance and having optimal health. So when we think about Ayurveda, there's some key terms. I'm going to come back just before I start to show the terms. There's some key terms that I'm going to bring up on this slide now. It might seem a bit overwhelming. Some of these terms may not make total sense, but they'll all come together, I promise, by the next slide. So when we uh, talk about Ayurveda, there's two ultimate universal, universal principles there's spirit, which is Purusha, and matter, which is Prakriti. And basically, it's the union of these two coming together that the entire universe comes from. And the Prakriti part is composed of something called gunas. There's three gunas. And these are present in us. They're present in everything surrounding us. And these gunas are called Sattva, Rajas, and Tamas. Okay, so you can see what these um, include. So Sattva is about balance and wisdom. Rajas is action and energy. And Tamas is inertia and delusion. And I'm not going to go into this in too much detail for the sake of what we're talking about today. But I think this is important just so you can understand how we get to the third slide. Okay, so these gunas, like I said, they're present in everything, but they can be in different amounts. So um, there might be more Rajas in, in something and more Sattva in something else. But what makes us unique as humans is that we have the ability to actually consciously alter these gunas in our bodies and in our minds. And that can be through things like our lifestyle, uh, what we eat, our thoughts, etc. OK, so we're very unique as human beings that we can actually alter the, um, the composition of these gunas. So these gunas, we've got these three gunas, and out of them, when they're combined, comes the five great elements, ether, air, water, fire and earth. And these five elements, again, they exist in everything, including us, but they can be in various amounts, okay? And this is what governs our mind and our body and our spirit. So this is what we're really going to come on to today. When, when these five elements are charged, we've got these five elements here, and when they're charged with something called prana, which is the life force, if you practice yoga, you might hear of prana, pranayama, breathing, prana is life force. So we've got these five great elements, we've got prana combining with them, and they combine we have something left called the three doshas. And this is what we're really going to talk about today. So these three doshas, um, they appear in us and they can appear in different proportions. And this is what makes all of us different. Okay, so our prakriti, our unique mind body type, our unique constitution, you'll hear different terms come about. But ultimately, we're talking about these three doshas. And the three doshas are vata, pitta and kapha. Okay, so you can see them here. So we've got vata, which is made up of the air and ether element. We've got pitta, made up of fire and water, and then kapha, which is made up of water and earth. So we've got all of these doshas within us, all three. So myself, I've got all three doshas within me, but they'll be in various amounts. So I might have more of one 
and less of the other two. And then that might be different to you or to my mum or to my husband. We've all got different amounts and that's what makes us all different. And this is what I really want to talk about today. Okay, so these three doshas, okay, these doshas are, are the three energies that, that define three energies, sorry, that define every person's makeup, okay, so they're kind of like our unique blueprint, and if you think about modern medicine, it's very much based on the structure of the body, but Ayurveda is much more about the energy behind these structures, and that's why it's very different and quite unique, okay, and from an Ayurvedic perspective, it talks about the fact that we can achieve balance by the harmonious interaction of these doshas. And that doesn't mean that you have 33.3% of each of the doshas. Once you understand your unique type, so let's say, for example, I might be very much kapha and hardly any vata and pitta, then that's, if I come out of balance, it might be because my vata and pitta have really shot up and I want to try and come back to balance for me, which would be reducing those vata and pitta. So hopefully that makes sense. You can see the balance is about what's balanced for me. And we do that through our nutrition, our lifestyle practices, our thoughts, et cetera. Okay. So the more we get to know ourselves, it's so key for this here. So we can start to come back to that balance. But also the more we get to know ourselves, we can understand why we are as we are, why we have got the body shape we've got, why our hair is a certain way, why we have some thoughts, you know, where we get on with some people and not others, why you know, from a career perspective, why some jobs are more suited to us than others or our, our skills and strengths, what they are. And, you know, if you're a VAT and you're very creative, then you know some jobs that may be more suitable for that. And if you're in a role where you don't really get to use that creativity and it's stifled, that that might be quite frustrating for you. So this really helps. It gives another level to understanding who we are and what's important to us and how we can really come alive by understanding this and by the food we eat to keep us in balance, by the activities we do, the routine, the lifestyle, all of this to support us as individuals so that we, live our, we can live our best lives. So I'm going to come on to each of the doshas in more detail, but let's just have an overview. Okay, so I'm going to break down each one. And as you're going through it, you might start to go, oh, that's me. Okay, and that's fine. But let's just go through. This is an overview. Then we'll go through each one in more detail. Okay, and you might even as we're going through this start to notice, ah, I think that's what Lucy is. <laughs> so let's see as we go through it. So Vata. Vata people tend to have very light frames. Okay, and when I say this about a Vata person, please bear in mind, a Vata person will still have Pitta and Kapha in them, but it's just they're predominantly Vata. Okay, and you might find you're not just one. You might have Vata and Kapha. You might be Pitta Kapha. Kapha vata. You might have different constitutions. You might find that you're something called tridoshic, which is where you've got all three. Okay. So let's just talk about vata people first. If this is if someone was predominantly vata, they would have a light frame. Their appetite might be variable. Their skin dry, thin, and their digestion might be variable. So sometimes they're really hungry, other times they're not. From a mind point of view, they can get quite aggravated by the cold weather. Um, by lack of routine, if they're traveling a lot, their memory, they learn quickly and they forget quickly. So like I just said, when you understand this, it also helps you think about, let's say from a career point of view, or maybe studying. If you're a Vata, you learn really quickly, but then you've forgotten quite quickly. So you're not going to retain that information for very long. They learn by listening and their energy can actually be quite nervous. Okay. Pitta people, let's go on to pitta people. So again, this is somebody who's got a predominance in the pitta dosha. So their build might be more of a medium build, more muscular. Their appetite, they can have strong, um, and so their appetite can be strong and they really do not like missing their meals. They've got a very strong appetite, so they're quite hangry if they don't eat. Their skin may be a bit more warm, pale, they may have freckles. This could give my dosha away. Their digestion is quite strong, very regular they can get aggravated by the heat. So if you remember, pitta dosha is made up of the fire element. So heat could really aggravate them. Um, alcohol, stress, spicy flavors, again, that heating thing can really aggravate them. Their memory is very good and they have a sharp memory. They learn more by reading and they're quite visual still. And then energy is quite motivational. Pitta people can tend to be quite motivating, quite inspiring. Let's move on to kapha. So kapha people, a predominance in the kapha dosha. So there might be more of a large frame here, maybe prone to being overweight. Their appetite is constant. So it might be more grazing. 
their skin, very thick, oily, beautiful, smooth, cool skin. You know, when you think about children, that like dewy skin, that's what you'll find with kapha people. Their digestion may be a bit more slow, a bit more heavy. They're aggravated. So from an aggravation point of view, the cold will aggravate them as well. They can also be quite aggravated if they do overeat and there's too little variety in their lifestyle. Memory, they actually learn quite slowly, but then they don't forget. So quite opposite to your vata people. They learn by association, by doing, and their energy, they're quite content. They're quite grounded. So as you look through that, you might be starting to think, oh, that's me. Or, oh, that's so my partner, that's so my children, that's so my family. And we can't help, we start to look through this. And this is why it's so interesting. Um, when you start to look at this, you just get a bit more understanding of who you are, but also how others are. So I'm going to tell you mine now. So I'm Pitta Vata. So I'm predominantly Pitta and quite high Vata with very little Kapha. So if you try to look at this, I'm just going to talk about my example to help you understand this. As somebody who's quite Pitta Vata and very little Kapha, I can find Kafa people from a work point of view. I used to find it, I used to find some people quite frustrating. <laughs> can you believe that when I'm a high pitter? So if from a work point of view, if people took a long time to get to the point or they like to take their time doing things, I would find that very frustrating because I've got the pitter, that, that fire in me that's heating, but I'm very I'm very uh, motivated and very driven and ambitious. And I've also got this vata, which is very quick. So I want things done quickly. Okay, so a car for person coming in, being really slow, content to be methodical with something would frustrate me. <laughs> um, and, and then what you can find the other way is as a vata that I, you know, that memory of learning quickly and forgetting quickly, vata people tend to get very excited about new projects and start lots of things, but not necessarily finish them. That will drive a kapha person quite insane. So you can just start to understand it's another dimension of who we are and need, none of this is right or wrong, but you can just have more of an understanding and appreciation and empathy for other types. Okay, so let's come on to each in a bit more detail. So vata. So remember I said, if you're a Vata person, so Vata being that's your predominant, Vata is made up of air and ether. So you even think about air and ether. It's light, it's moving. So the Vata dosha actually governs all movements in the body. But if you are somebody who's predominantly Vata, physically you might have that thinner, lighter frame, small mouth, small lips, and um, they might be quite thin, even thin hair, quite dry skin. Okay, so this is like physical features. You might be sensitive to the cold because there's an Ayurvedic concept, which is like increases like and opposites balance. So if like increases like, if vata is made up of air and ether, quite cooling, then the cold is going to aggravate as well because it's like increases like. So cold, wind, dry weather will aggravate vata. And we'll come on to seasons in a minute. They can have cold extremities. You know, I always have cold hands and feet. So if you're high vata, you might find you get always, you know, quite cold hands in the winter. From a, a body point of view, they could have quite erratic appetites. So like I said, they might be really hungry, they're not hungry at all. And therefore they can have quite irregular digestions, which can be easily disturbed, whether that might be constipation or it could be um, bloating as well. They can also have irregular menstruation and they might have acute premenstrual pain as well. Okay, now when we think about sleep, they can have quite light sleep, quite restless sleep, and often suffer from insomnia. So again, if you've got quite high vata and you're like, I just don't understand why I can't sleep properly, it could be because of this, okay? And then from a personality point of view, they've got a very active mind. Remember I said they're quite busy, always on the go. They're very creative, very artistic, imaginative. So if you've got somebody who's like high, quite high vata in work, they're the ones that come up with all the ideas. We could try it this way. You're like, oh, I never thought of that. They're also quite open and tolerant of others. And they can actually be quite sensitive vatas. They can tend to, to really um, take things on and think about them and be very sensitive, not just sensitive in their nature, but sensitive with their thoughts as well. And that, that can make them actually retreat when they're anxious. Um, they can have multiple projects on the go. I always joke, you know a vata because they've got 20 tabs open on their screen and they don't, they've not done one of them and they can't remember where they are that's a vata you'll also know to a vata they got quite um they're quite energetic but it can be sporadic so you might notice i'm using my hands a lot that's a vata thing 
I can't sit still. I've got a lot of energy in me. So it can be quite restless. And that's not just physically restless, but a restless mind. So you can see if you've got high vata and you've got a restless mind, that could be why you're not sleeping. If you wake up in the middle of the night, vata people, <laughs> I'm joking because this is me, but vata people tend to be sat there thinking, I could do this, could do that. I've got this to do. Restless minds. Okay, so that's your vatas. And there's loads more I could say, but like I said, this is just an introduction today. So let's come on to our pittas. So pitta is made up of the fire and water element, and it governs all of the trans transformation of food and ideas in the body. That's what pitta is responsible for. Now, if you're a pitta person, pitta person, pitta, pitta predominant, it's got a bit of a mouthful, pitta predominant person, physically, because of that heat, that fire, you're quite hot in nature. And what that can mean is you might have a bit of a ruddy complexion, quite warm extremities. Um, it can come up in many freckles. Um, you might have some moles. You can be prone towards acne and rashes as well. And the skin can be fairer um, and also have that kind of reddish tinge to it as well. Um, pitters tend to be more of a medium muscular build as well sensitive they burn in the sun easily if you think there's a lot of that fire element and if like increases like if we're in the heat we're going to burn so they can be quite sensitive to heat and humidity and that's just not heat from outside that can be heat with our food if you have a really hot curry that can upset a pitta person and their, their digestion um, if you go into a sauna that might be too much hot yoga could be too much for a pitta person from a body function point of view they can be prone to inflammation because there's that heat in the body um, so again, if you think about inflammation, it could be things like acne, it could be um, things like eczema. Um, they have a strong appetite. And as a result, if they miss meals, they can be quite irritable. So rather than our vatas, where we said they could skip meals, pitters don't like skipping meals. So they really benefit from having um, regular three meals a day, they've got that strong appetite to be able to digest it. They normally have quite regular menstrual cycles, but they can have heavy bleeding and PMS as well. Sleep cycles, pitters can sleep lightly, a bit like vatas, but they tend to have quite good quality sleep. They can overheat um, at night during their sleep because again, there's a lot of that fire element. And this is why when it comes to menopause, if females have got quite a lot of high pitta uh, within them already, they might find when they come to menopause that one of the things, or when they're perimenopausal, sorry, one of the things might be hot flushes that they start to experience. Um, pitters can tend to burn the candles at both ends. OK, they, they like to say yes to everything and do lots of things. Very ambitious, very driven, type A personalities. And so they can tend to burn the candles at both end. And so pitta people tend to be intelligent. Um, they're very focused. Like I said, they're quite motivational and inspiring. They're very focused, very ambitious. It can get to the point where it can be aggressive. So they have to be really careful with that. I'm um, very competitive in nature. To the point it could be workaholic, um, a bit perfectionist as well. So if you notice that and you know you're a bit of a workaholic, everything's got to be great and perfect, tend to, you could be quite high pitta um, constitution. And they've got very dynamic personalities. Like I just said, they're very inspirational, very motivational. So that dynamic personality is great. They can be great um, for starting conversations, for networking. You'll also find the pitta is very quick. So you might find they're quite quick-witted as well. You know, you can think on their feet, quite funny, um, sarcastic, like that kind of quick wit. So that's your pitta people. I don't want to keep saying pitta people. It's a bit of a mouthful. <laughs> so let's come on to kapha. So kapha is made up of the water and earth element. And kapha is responsible for the physical structure of the body. And this will make sense in a couple of slides why that's um, important. But let's just focus on this now if you're a kapha person. So physically, Kaffers um, tend to have full, soft, um, thick, cool skin. You remember I said like how children, like young babies, have that lovely kind of um, dewy skin. This is what kaffer people tend to have because they've got a lot of that water element in them. They might have a larger frame because they're well, they've got like well lubricated joints, so they can have a tendency to be overweight. Um, but they've got this thick, soft, oily, juicy, beautiful hair. Normally, um, round face. They might have very full lips. So that water element is giving those. Really Real, um, there's a term called ojas within Ayurveda, but it's kind of that moistness and that um, vitality. That's what I'm thinking of. So that's your kaffas. They can be intolerant to the cold and damp environments. So if you think there's that water earth element and like increases light, they can be quite um, intolerant to that. So it might be when they're getting lots of colds and coughs, especially when we come into springtime, which I'll come on to in the seasons in a sec. 
From a body function point of view, carfers tend to um, have a tendency towards colds, like I just said, congestion, allergies. They've actually got quite a strong appetite, but they can have slow, um, regular bowel movements. So because their bowel movement is quite slow, they can, they can tend to find that they're not digesting their food as well. And so, and they want to keep eating. So their digestion and their bowel movements could be quite sluggish and quite slow. They can have regular menstrual cycles and actually they have a minimum of premenstrual depression as well. So out of all of the three doshas, carfers tend to have less PMS. From a sleep cycle point of view, carfers sleep well. <laughs> they tend to be quite heavy sleepers, maybe to the point they sleep too much. Okay, and we'll come on to this uh, when we talk about the different stages of life, but you can see why um, this is really relevant. From a personality and mental activity point of view, they're very easygoing carfers. They're very fun. They're loving, they're loyal, they're patient as well. Um, very grounding. That's the best way to think about a car person. Very grounding. You might think of somebody in your circle of friends who's just that calming influence. Can just, you know, at work, maybe when everything's, everyone's going a bit crazy and your vatas are running around and your pet is like, I'm so angry. <laughs> it's your car person going, hey, it's okay. Just calm down. They're your car for people. They can speak and move quite slowly. So if you're a Vata person and you walk quite quickly and you're behind a Kapha person walking slowly, <laughs> then you can see where those, those kind of conflicts can come. As somebody who walks quite fast, you know, I'm, I'm walking behind a slow person. I'm like, ah, I'm behind a Kapha person. Okay, we got this. So it's just understanding this. Um, they're very calm, like I said, and they're reliable. Your Kapha people are reliable. So if you think in work, you've got your people who are just reliable. You know you can just give them a project and they'll get it done. Okay, maybe outside, maybe a friend who's always loyal, always there for you. And this is why it makes them really, um, that kind of caring nature can make them really good managers. It can make them really good caretakers. You find a lot of car for people may go into care or they just naturally take on that role in the friendship group, in the family as well. Okay, so they're your coffers. Actually, before we come on to this, so the next slide is talking about balance and imbalance. When I say this, what I'm talking about balance and imbalance it's saying, so for a Vata person, it's saying there's certain things. So if a Vata person comes out of balance and there can be many things that brings a Vata person out of balance, it could be the season we're in, it could be the time of day, it could be what they're eating, it could be their lifestyle. There's lots of things that bring us out of balance. And what we want to do using Ayurveda is learn how to get back to balance through our lifestyle, through our nutrition, through our thoughts, everything. So when I come onto this next slide, I'm just talking about balance in that way. It's not about saying balance in a balanced diet. It's just a Vata person, what they look like in balance and out of balance. So let's go on to Vata first. If a Vata person is in balance, they are very inspiring. They're emotionally very balanced. They've got a nice, concise, clear mind. They're enthusiastic. They've got good complexion, good digestion. Fertility-wise, they've got great fertility as well. So this is your Vata person if they're in balance. Okay. If they've come out of balance, and we all can come out of balance at times, so when they come out of balance, you might notice this, if you're high vata, what that could look like for you is that you worry more. You're more prone to insomnia. Maybe your memory's gone quite poor, you're forgetting things all the time. You're getting a lot of coughs. You're very tired. There's fatigue. You might have diarrhea, or there could be gas, that bloating I talked about. There could be constipation, lower back pain. Um, there could be sexual disorders because Vata is responsible for movement in the body. So there could be sexual disorders, um, arthritis, poor circulation. Okay, I'm not going to get into everything about why that is because really, this is meant to be a short introduction. There's much more I could say, and I'm happy to answer any questions, but I just want to give you an overview. Pitta people, here I am again, pitta people. So if a pitta person is in balance, they've got strong digestion. When I say strong heart, not just from a health point of view, but very caring. Pitta people can be very caring as well. Very motivated. They've got good eyesight. From a sweating point of view, what I mean by this is that they've got good sweating in that they can maintain their body um, temperature. There's not, you know, there's issues there because um, pitta is responsible for metabolism and for transformation. If there's... Um, issues where they're not sweating as much because they're quite busy then that can lead to imbalance so everything's fine in the body they're sweating they're energetic they're smart witted you remember i said they're quite quick that's your pitta person in balance okay but when they're out of balance we might start to see addictions we can see anger there could be problems with the liver there could be acne um acne or skin cancer there can be heart attacks 
Um, there can be visual problems and also a lot of indecision. Okay, now let's come on to kapha. So when a kapha person is in balance, we can see a lot of calmness. They're very loving and nurturing. They're strong. They've got good stamina. They're forgiving. They've got fluid joints. They're very methodical as well. But when out of balance, a kapha person might find they're more prone to obesity. There could be food sensitivities there. They could have slow digestion. They could also um, have lethargy. They can be quite irritable, quite, uh, it's not on here, but quite stubborn as well. Okay, so that's when a, uh, a kapha person's out of balance. Okay, so hopefully you can see, you won't even be looking at it going, I can see where I'm really in balance or maybe I've come out of balance a bit. And then what we would do when we look at this further is like, well, what's caused you to come out of balance and what can we do to come back into balance? That's for another <laughs> slide, another presentation. So I just want to touch on this before we finish. Just like I'm not going to go through each part of this, but just like I said before, it's not just about what we eat and our lifestyles. There's other things that can bring us in and out of balance. And we're going to talk about this now, this is the seasons and the circadian rhythms. But just going back to that important on um, the last line here, there's a key Ayurvedic concept, like increases like, opposites balance. Okay, and just remember that as we're going through this. Because we're going to talk about the circadian rhythms first. So there's a lot of information on here, but if I just explain it. So each in the Ayurveda, in the Ayurvedic clock, we actually break this clock down into six times of the day. Okay, and there's a, a dosha that governs that time of the day. So we think about the kapha, oh, look at that, woo, woo. If we think about the kapha time of the day, this is six till 10 in the morning. OK, and it's the bedrock of the day. And it's that time of the day where we really should be waking up. We should get ready for the day. We gather our energy for the day. So if you think about that calf energy, do you remember that I said calfers can tend to oversleep? There can be sluggishness. We want to do the opposite. Do you remember I said that opposites um, like increases like opposites balance? We want to be doing the opposite. We want to be getting up. We want to start the day. So if you're lying in bed, you might notice this that maybe in the week you get up at six, let's say and you're ready to start the day, you've got a great routine, but weekends, you lie until nine, and you think, great, I'm going to have a bit more sleep, but actually you feel worse for it when you sleep in. That's because you've come into the calf for time of day. So if you don't get up before that, you can tend to feel more sluggish. Okay, so it's just understanding this. And all of this I'm sharing today is not that you've got to start implementing all these things straight away, but hopefully it just gives you a bit more understanding about why you might be feeling the way you are and understand how empowered you are to make changes. They're simple, simple changes. So 10 o'clock in the morning till two, have I got another one? Woo, yep, 10 o'clock in the morning till two in the afternoon is the pitta time of day. This is when we're most productive. Do you remember I said pitta's got a lot of energy? So if you've got a big project at work, this is the time to do it. You've got the energy, that fire within you. It's when you should eat the biggest meal of the day because you've got enough energy to, um, and fire to burn and digest that food. So this is a time to take action, to do those big projects you've been putting off because you've got that energy. We then come into the vata time of the day, two till six in the afternoon. So you might find you get that slump in the afternoon. You might feel there's not as much energy because you had all this energy from Pitta. And Vata is much more about that creative time, time to move, time to take it a bit more easy. So you've put a work project on till two in the afternoon or in the afternoon part of the day. You might find it takes a lot more energy and time because you just haven't naturally got it. So just understand how you can even plan your work around this. You can plan your day around this and give yourself a bit of a break, understanding, oh, there's nothing wrong with me. It's just, this is how it is. And so no, no wonder I'm feeling a bit more creative now. And I haven't got that same energy to do that big project. Okay. We then come into the cycle again for uh, the evening. So six or 10 at night, we've got that calf energy. So remember, calf is very heavy, very nurturing and grounding. Nature knows we need this time to start to get us ready for bed. So it's when we should start to slow down, prepare for sleep. So we're working really late at night. We're going against this. Nature's trying to help us. So it's time to really start to slow down, have some food, take it easy. Because we then come into the pitta time. So 10 o'clock at night till two in the morning is the pitta time. So this is when we should really make sure we're in bed by. Okay, before 10 o'clock, ideally, or around that time, it's not bang on 10, but around that time. Because what can tend to happen, if you think pit is all about that energy, if we're not in bed before that, nature, the outside world is starting to, that energy starting to um, build up with very energetic. So you might find, say if you're applying to emails or working late, you get that second win. You're like, 
oh, I was tired just a minute ago, but now I'm raring to go. And then when you finally switch off at say 12, you can't get to sleep. You're buzzing still. That's because you haven't gone to bed early enough. Okay, so it's not just about saying get eight hours. It's actually trying to get to bed before this time around 10-ish because that's when the pitta energy starts to come in and you might find it harder to get to sleep. Um, also, we need to digest our day. We don't just digest our food. We need to digest our day, our thoughts, our emotions, because if we don't, we're going to wake up the next day with those same thoughts. Maybe we went to bed frustrated. We're still going to be frustrated. We haven't let it rest. We haven't let it be digested in our body to process it. So it's really important we get to sleep and we get enough sleep. And then two to six in the morning is the Vata time. So this is called the quiet cycle. So we tend to sleep more lightly at this time. It might be, if you remember I said Vata is very creative. So this is the time of night where we have more dreams. We're quite visual. But also that movement, that lightness of Vata, this is why we tend to, if you are quite high Vata constitution, you might find, actually, I can fall asleep easy. But I wake up early and when I wake up, I can't get back to sleep because we've got that restless mind. We're thinking all the time. So this is that Vata time um, of the night where you might be more prone to be waking up. And if you suffer with insom insomnia, this might be the time you're waking up because we've got that light quality in the um, atmosphere. OK, so that's the Ayurvedic clock. Let's talk about the seasons. So like I said, everything in nature, um, there's always... A so when we think about nature, there's always a beginning, middle and end. And Ayurveda treats it very much that way with the seasons. OK, and just like there's changes in the seasons all the time outside, this can affect us as well, because there's different doshas related to the seasons. So let's just talk about these. We've got the Kapha season. We've got the Pitta season and we've got the Vata season. Now, this is in the um, northern hemisphere. Obviously, if you're living in the southern hemisphere, you just do the opposite. OK, so when we're coming into our summer in, I'm in Wales, but in the UK, then our summer is going to be more like the winter for you. Okay, so I'm talking about Northern Hemisphere here, but you just turn it around. So the Kapha season is March till June, roughly, you know, but what characterizes that is that Kapha season is when it's starting to get wet and damp. Do you remember I said Kapha is made up of water and earth? So it's starting to get damp. And this is why, you know, if we think about that transition, when it starts to get a bit more moistness in the air, and we tend to get those coughs, we're a bit more phlegmy, we get a bit more mucus. We tend to then come down with colds in the transition of the seasons. Um, this is that. This is why, because we're coming into that Kapha season. We then come into the Pitta season after that. So it's when it's starting to get hot. And then we come into the Vata season. OK, so this is October to March. Now, there's different variations of this. Sometimes there's four seasons and we break it down. But this is just giving you an overview for today. We, I'm not going to start getting into more depth, um, more detail. This is just an overview of how the seasons work. And the, what characterizes them, that pitta season is the hot season because it's got that fire and, and energy and the vata season is that coolness. So, you know, when we come into autumn and start to get a little more breezy, we have um, the kind of light evenings with the air coming in, but it is starting to get colder as well. So the reason this is important is, so let's talk about myself. I'm a pitta vata. So I'm in the pitta season now, and you can see it's very hot outside. I'm recording this in August. It's warm outside, like increases, like an opposites balance. So I've got a high pitta um, constitution. So I've got that heat. I'm in heat outside. So that's going to increase my pitta. So I might find I get more angry. I get more irritable. I maybe get a bit more um, quick witted. I maybe I get my digestions impacted. So there's a number of things that can happen. So just being aware of that and knowing, ah, oh, OK, yeah, I'm coming into the hot season. I just need to be mindful of that. I'm not going to aggravate. I'm not going to go into also then go and eat loads of hot food or practice hot yoga because that's going to be too much for me, for my constitution. Equally, then coming into Vata season, I just need to be mindful. OK, it's starting to get cooler. So I'm going to start to get really cold hands and feet. So I need to make sure I dress warm. I'm coming into the Vata season. I, my sleep's already affected. I'm not sleeping as well. So I need to make sure I'm going to bed early enough because I'm going to start to get aggravated. So it's just, again, it's another tool to help you understand what's going on and why and how you can adjust your lifestyle accordingly. Okay, so the last thing we're going to talk about is the rhythm of life, the stages of life. So in Ayurveda, we also talk about the different stages of life. And we talk about the Kapha stage, the Pitta stage and the Vata stage. Now, with the Kapha stage, it's not saying bang on 30, you move into the next stage. It can alter person by person. This is just a rough um, guide. 
But this calf stage, you remember I said uh, about 10 minutes ago about um, if a calf person's got very moist skin, it's like a baby, kind of that, that juiciness to it. This is that calf stage. So the, actually when we're born, we're in that calf stage. And this is why the reason it's called the calf stage is because that calf energy is more present. But calf people, do you remember I said they're very loyal, very grounding, um, very nurturing as well. This is what children are like. They're very trusting. And also calf is responsible for the body structure. So this is where we're starting to, our body is taking shape and it's going through a number of changes. So the calf supports that process. So this is the calf stage of life. Now I'm going to come on to the pitta and vata stage because most of people watching this are going to be more in these stages. If we're coming into the pitta stage, which says 30 to 60, it might be slightly earlier, finishing slightly later, but what characterizes the pitta stage is, you think about pitta, ambitious, energetic. You know, we've got the energy to be doing what we need to do in this stage of life. This is the stage of life where we're going out to get careers. We're starting a family. We're looking to buy a house, maybe. We're starting to do foundations of what the rest of our life might look like. So we need the energy to do that. And this is um, why it's called the pitta stage of life. And then we transition to the Vata stage of life. And again, it might be slightly earlier or later, but this transition is, is called the wisdom stage of life. So you think about Vatas, they're very creative, but also um, uh, if you think about that kind of movement, there, there's a lot of wisdom there, but there's also um, a lot of, um, how do I word it? It's not, that, not just that creativity, but that kind of trusting of themselves as that inner wisdom this is why when we move into this Vata stage, we kind of get to that point where like, I don't need to impress anyone anymore. I'm done with that. I'm done with that Pitta stage. I know who I am. I'm more understanding of who I am. I'm more forgiving of myself. I don't need a big friendship group. I'm just very content. And I know the people around me and I know what I want and what I don't want. And I'm going to go for what I want. So we, I sometimes joke about like, um, you know, if we've got grandparents maybe or older relatives and they'll just say what they think. There's no filter. <laughs> to the you're like, oh gosh, don't say that. Maybe they're in this Vata stage and they don't need to, they don't want to have to impress people. They don't care so much. So it's knowing ourselves and being very content with that. And when we come into that Vata stage, it's a beautiful stage of life. It's not saying, it's not something to want to not be in or put off. We've learned our lessons and we can start to really just trust ourselves and live a beautiful life. So these are the three stages of life. And you might again identify where, what stage you're at. And there's always transitions with each stage as well. So let's just give a summary of the doshas and what we've learned today. So let's do vata to begin with. So vata is the energy of movement. It's made up of air and ether. It means to move and it's responsible for all the movement in the body. It's also from a season's point of view, it's kind of late autumn, early winter. It's responsible for the two and six um, in the morning, two and six in the evening times a day. The life stage is around 60 plus. And actually I've put in here where it sits in the body. So the dosha of vata, it sits in the large intestine, but also um, in the pelvis, in the bones, in the skins, in the ears and the thighs. Okay, pitta. And the reason that's important, so I'm going to talk about it more with the pitta now. So pitta is energy of transformation. It's made up of fire and water and it means to burn. It's that transformation. It's responsible for in the body of heat and energy, that metabolism, which is why, again, if you've got high pitta, you've got good digestion. From a season's point of view, it's more late spring and summer in the northern hemisphere. The times of day it's responsible for is 10 to 2 um, over lunchtime and then 10 to 2 at nighttime as well. The life phase is around 30 to 60 is that adulthood time. And it sits in the dosha, in the small intestine, in the stomach, the sweat glands, um, sweat glands, sorry, the eyes, the blood, and the skin. So do you remember I said a couple of slides ago, if you're in balance as a pit, you've got good, um, you've got good eyesight, good vision. And if you're in balance, you don't. That's because dosha is sits in the eyes. Okay. So if you tend to get eye problems, it might be the pit of dosha is out of balance. Okay, and then let's go on to kapha finally. Kapha is the energy of stability. Its elements are water and earth. It means to stick. It means to kind of that building block of the body. It's responsible for our physical stability, for the body structure as well. And the seasons are late winter, early spring, when that water starts to come out more, that kind of more dampness. The times of day are 6 till 10 in the morning, 6 till 10 at night. 
It's that early part, it's that childhood um, part in our life phase. And it sits in the chest, which is why we can tend to get a lot of congestion uh, if the kapha dosha is imbalanced. Um, it sits in the throat, um, in our sinuses and our nose as well, and also with our joints um, and our stomach as well. Okay, so that's kind of an overview of the doshas and hopefully just giving you an introduction to Ayurveda. There's so much more I could say, but like I said, I just wanted to keep it quite brief today and hopefully just really explain what the doshas are and how they can be affected, not just by what we eat um, and our lifestyle, but also the seasons, the time of day and where we are in our life phase as well. So there's so much more I could say about kind of if you're a vata, foods to avoid, foods to have more of, or lifestyle choices to make, or exercise. There's lots we could talk about, and maybe they're for future ones, but this was just to give you an overview and an introduction. So if you've got any questions from today, please email me. I'll put my details with this video, but it's hello at lucyclementsonmills.co.uk. And if you want to stay in touch, I'm using, again, using my name, Lucy Clements and Mills. I'm on LinkedIn, um, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. So I'm on all of those as well. And I also have a weekly newsletter. So again, if you want to sign up for that, either email me or if you go to my website, www.lucyclementsandmills, or one word, .co.uk, you can also um, register for the newsletter there. And it's a weekly newsletter where I share tips and ideas, not just for your well-being, but also for your career as well. And, you know, this has got you thinking, you're sat there thinking, okay, I kind of am interested in Ayurveda. I want to understand how I can use this ancient wisdom to, to bring more balance into my life, but also maybe your career to have more joy, fulfillment. It might be career or life. It might be both. Then I actually offer a one-to-one 90-day career and well-being coaching package. This is called Career and Life Rejuvenated. It's a program that's one-to-one. And this is really for people who might be feeling stuck or lost, uh, unfulfilled or stressed, that's whether that's in work or in life, and really want to start to get some clarity and confidence and be fulfilled and have joy again, again, whether that's in their life or in work, maybe in both. This is who the program's for. So when I work with people, we kind of really identify what's going on for you right now, thinking about um, your current situation where you want to be and then we'd look at the steps we take to get you there so you can really start to understand who you are like we do with Ayurveda what it is you really want not what you think you're but what you really want and then the steps we take you to take you to get there and how to get it so if you want to find out more I actually offer 90 minute coaching consultation calls they're totally free no obligation it's just a chance for us to chat you can ask me any questions and we just start to unra- unravel and find out what is it is you're looking for, what's going on now, where do you want to be? And then we can see if coaching's a good fit for you. So again, if you want to book that free consultation call, it's www.lucyclementsonmills.co.uk or hello at lucyclementsonmills.co.uk to email me. But thank you so much for joining me. I hope that's given you some insight into what I've made. It's all about please ask me any questions. I'm always happy to help. But thank you so much for joining me. And I look forward to sharing more soon. Take care. Bye.